Welcome to episode zero, or the pilot episode of AV Geeks Assembled podcast. I'm Andrew, and with me are Anthony. Hello. Ben. Hi there. And Martin. Hello. Basically, this is our new monthly podcast, and we're going to be celebrating everything about military aviation photography in the UK. Um, we are a small group of amateur aviation photographers who want to fill a gap in the UK aviation podcast market and discuss military aviation, events, air shows, and deployments. There will also be aviation trips, and we are hoping to arrange some base tours that we will want to share with you, obviously post-lockdown and restrictions uh, providing and all of that. Uh, we also plan on having a monthly guest on each podcast. They will be someone who is either an aviation photographer or someone who may find themselves a subject of an aviation photographer, but more on that later on. We also want to state now that our opinions are just that. We are not professional aviation commentators yet. Uh, please join us on this flight. We're not quite sure on the final destination, but we will see where it goes. Have some fun and hopefully you will too. So we've basically got a Facebook and Instagram page at the moment and YouTube as of recently, um, which is at avgeeks underscore assemble. So please, obviously after this, go and check that out. Give us a follow, give us a like, and it will also take us to take you to each individual member that we've got as well. Uh, but today, like we say, we've got these three gents with us. Um, we'll start with individual beginnings with these guys here. So, and if we start with you, where did aviation photography start for you? Um, well, for me, uh, well, the two separate things really. So, uh, for me, um, I've always been, I've always lived in the shadow of Birmingham airport. Um, and obviously started going to air shows from the age of eight. I uh, went to Cosford Air Show back in 1992. And uh, obviously, up until that point, it had just been watching airliners go past my bedroom window. But obviously, uh, as uh, when, when I got to my first air show, that's when uh, sort of my eyes were opened a little bit. And seeing things like um, the Harrier and the Vulcan at an air show was just, I'll never forget that moment. It was amazing sort of thing. So... So yeah, I've always I've always been going to air shows. I've always uh, I've always had an interest in aviation. Obviously, that gets tempered a little bit with uh, growing up and discovering beer and girls and things like that. Um, but <laughs> as 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 you do. Um, but obviously, I came back to it uh, in the last few years. And uh, the the photography things, the newest thing for me, believe it or not, I started doing some landscape photography about three years ago, and uh, that quickly led on to discovering the Mac Loop. And then obviously uh, from there went on to uh, military aviation photography full time almost. That's what it feels like anyway, but I love it. <laughs> Especially during the lockdown as well. It's, it's certainly helped. <laughs> yeah, garden spotting is a big part of my life at the moment. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> class. Oh, yeah. Um, and obviously your Instagram page is doing pretty well at the moment as well. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, it's uh, it, it's gone amazingly well. I mean, I've only been doing aviation photography on Instagram for 18 months, and I've just recently, in the last week or so, passed 10,000 followers. So um, I think that's uh, an amazing achievement, really. And uh, obviously, anyone who does follow me who's listening to this, it's a massive thank you to them, really, for the support and their uh, their engagement with the page. And I'm just glad that people enjoy the uh, the shots that I'm putting out. So, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's good. Um, ben, same question to you. How did um, aviation photography start for you, mate? Uh, cheers, Andrew. Um, yeah, so for me, um, I was in aviation for quite a while. I was uh, in the Air Cadets in the UK for uh, eight years. So obviously with that, the possibility and trip to going to bases and air shows all over the UK, got the, uh, the interest of aviation up high. Um, Pretty much the same as Ant, really. Aviation photography for me has been going for about two two years, three years now. Um, seriously, in the last 18 months, two years. It was really going to air shows and, and watching it, maybe taking a, a few snaps with a phone or with a um, or with a, a you know really small, cheap camera just to capture their moments. Um, and it wasn't until recently that I got a, you know, a better setup and... Um, progress to how I am now but yeah it's 
it's a brilliant experience i think you know you got all these base you know you can go to bases and you can do your snaps there but like most people have and like Ant definitely has going to the mac loop and getting that rush when you've got that 15 seconds of mm. getting that aircraft and trying to snap it it's just phenomenal but it's a fantastic community i mean with the av geeks group we have got so many friends that we talk to in the states australia Spain, Italy, Germany, you know, all over, as well as obviously the UK and Ireland. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm honoured to be a part of this amazing group that we have going. And, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's me. Great stuff. And last but certainly not least, Martin, same question, mate. Where did aviation photography start for you? Well, I've been going to air shows since... <laughs> I can't even remember, um, like the Milner Air Fates. And then photography kind of started for me, my first rear, which was 2007. My dad gave me a film camera. <laughs> and then a 200 mil back. lens. Nice. And that, he said, go on, go and have fun. <laughs> so for a couple of years, it was, I'd pick a camera up for rear, and that was it. Or if I went Duxford or somewhere like that, and then last couple of years is when things sort of started getting semi-serious and I was like all right I'm quite, I feel quite confident with my photos now like I start sharing them on social media so set up the Instagram page and yeah things just went from there did you start on a personal page or did you go straight in for an aviation account it was straight in for aviation mm. okay because I know for me me personally, I started annoying all of my friends and family with aviation shots that didn't actually care about aviation <laughs> photography. <and laughs> didn't we all? <laughs> <laughs> make an actual account. But obviously, you three guys are basically the founding members of the group that we've got. Um, and obviously, it all started from that Coningsby trip. So... <laughs> You know, I unfortunately wasn't a part of it. I think it. I think I came in maybe a couple of weeks after you'd been on that. I heard all about it. Obviously, green with envy with every single shot that's being shared in that group. <laughs> um, but tell us, Suze, you know, take it away. Martin, do you want to start? What What was that trip like for everyone? Well, so basically, I had met another one of our members, uh, Mike, Mike Knightley, at... Um, a photo shoot at Waddington and then it was kind of like right I've done a photo shoot now I want to visit a base so I put a story up on Instagram saying would anyone be interested in meeting me at Collinsby in January four or five people replied so I set up a group chat and then from that group chat was born AV Geeks Assemble Class. and that, that come after the Collinsby trip the name yeah. But the Connorsby trip itself was the foundation of what we have now. Yeah. Yeah. And no, it was a great cool. trip. It was a great trip as well, wasn't it? It was. Uh, I was gutted I missed it. Yeah. Like but, like I say, I, I came into I was invited into the group shortly after that trip um but with every shot that was sent in there of performance takeoffs and things like that i was just saying going i am gutted but unfortunately still haven't made it but um just, just so everyone can get everyone who's listening can get a bit of a, a sense of we did it in january uh, 2020 uh, and it was it was probably one of the coldest days of last winter <laughs> cold for some people yeah martin rocks up in a t-shirt and shorts <laughs> <laughs> The rest of us have got hats, scarves, gloves on, and yeah, but there's always one. There's always one. Yeah, it was that cold that a couple of us were like, right, we're going to go and do the BBMF hangar tour. <laughs> <laughs> AV geek heaven, that was. Oh yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> Hairs on the back of your neck standing up as soon as you walk through the door. It was, uh, yes, it was a good trip. Really good. No, that's quality because obviously there's been some since then, which obviously. We'll will expand on at some point, um, but obviously that Coningsby one was really where this all began. Um, I mean, who would have thought we'd be where we are now then? Um, but here we are. Um, so uh, this is open to anyone that wants to jump in. Um, where do we see the group? heading in the next two years obviously first things first we've got our facebook our instagram youtube is literally days old um 
this podcast is the beginnings of hopefully something amazing. But where do we see where where do we see us going from here? Well, I think I think if I can jump in first, I think what we want yeah. we just want to sort of build a community that that we can all sort of take part in and sort of share experiences, share photos, um, sort of go on trips together, like and just just have that sort of place where we can sort of escape from normal life and, and all the pressures that that brings and things and sort of um, just see, see where it goes. Really, I mean, it's it it, it, it could it could go anywhere i mean i don't know what ben and uh, martin think but i mean the world's your oyster really these days isn't it especially with uh with um with all the uh, social media channels and what like, starting this podcast i, I mm. think it's an amazing thing yeah yeah i think i echo ant on that i mean when i first started i didn't think there'd any you know there's any groups out there that were doing what we are doing um i just saw here recently everyone went out to their photos put them on social media, maybe put them on online on like um, airliners.net and, and jet photos and stuff like that. Um, but for a, a group of how we are and then going through Facebook and Instagram and seeing how many pages there are dedicated to bases or to air shows, warbirds, jets, you know, it's like I said, your, your world is your oyster. Um, now, for me, uh, I think I think Andrew, you're in the same boat as this. Um, I never knew that you could rock up to a base and snap typhoons taken off and American F-15s taken off. I thought that was an organised trip, and you had to go and you know pay Funny people lots of money. That. You're you're absolutely spot on because I found out that you could watch you know typhoons doing performance takeoffs yep. after i'd moved further away from places like lake and heath and coningsby like because <laughs> i used to live just outside of north london so i was maybe two hours away from coningsby i was i'm pretty sure about an hour and 20 minutes away from the likes of marham and lake and heath but i had no idea that they did daily flights and did you know things like that so it was it was air shows for me basically and then obviously I've moved to Devon. Someone mentioned we're going to go to Coningsby again. I said, oh, how far away is that from me? Uh, four hours and 55 minutes or something like that. And I went, ah, okay. That's, that's an overnight yeah. trip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sleep in um, LA, Mike, what, what, what about you, mate? What, what, are you, what do you see this group doing in the next few years? I hope that we inspire people. I think that should be a massive goal for us as we are moving away from being beginners in photography. I think we need to be inspiring the next people who are just starting out. But I think I, you're right. I think we inspire, were... inspire and help. I think yeah. should be massively key to yeah. engage in the community in the right ways. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 100% no, man. I, I agree. I mean, I mean, you guys have probably all, all had it on, on posts. You'll see someone with a post and you're like, wow, I I want that. I want to go to, you know, I want to go to the Mac Loop and get an F-15 coming through at 500 feet, at 500 knots. I want to go to Nellis and go and catch Red Flag and get a B-1 taken off of full burners. But then I like it when... I put a snap up and someone else goes, oh, wow, how how did you get that? And yeah. I think that's the satisfaction I get. And you, I, you guys will probably get it as well. When you take that snap and you you take that shot and you're there going, that's, that's a keeper. And then you share it for everyone else to see. And someone else goes, wow, I like that. How did you get that? Can you, can you assist me with settings or yeah. location and stuff like that? I think that's the most rewarding aspect of this. You know, yeah. we can we all dream to get published. We all dream to do air to air photography and get those shots. Absolutely. I think when you get a <clears throat> 13, 14 boy or girl um, comment or even come up to you and go, Oh wow, that's amazing. How did you do that? And you get them in, that is you know, that is the most probably the most rewarding aspect I think you can get out of, out of this hobby. I think, that, I think that shows a lot about 
um, the community of Av Geeks as well. Like, it, like I think it's I think it's global to be honest, but I think specifically in this country is that it's always a very tolerant place. It's a very it's a very sort of like you can talk you, you can talk to you can go to you can go to Lake and Eve and not know anyone there, but by the end of the day, you've probably spoken to forty fifty people at the fence. Yeah, you know what I mean, and, absolutely. And you've met a load of new people that. <clears throat> <clears throat> that have got stories to tell about like going to bases back in the day, like in the back in the nineties or the eighties or even earlier than that sometimes. And some of the stories they can tell are amazing of some of the mm. sort of things that they've seen. And I think I think along with that, obviously, like like echoing what Ben was just saying, it's about it's about us all improving as photographers. Like like we said at the at the top of the top of the podcast, it's we are amateurs at the end of the day. None of us are professional. Yeah, we might have sold the odd print here or there to the odd person. We're not professional. We're, we're, all, we're all still improving, and I think that's the key, isn't it? We're, we're learning, and we're learning from like inspirational shots that we see on the likes of Instagram and Facebook and things like that. Yeah. But then people are also learning from us, so it's it, we're sort of part of that chain, if you know what I mean. Which I think yeah. I think that's great. I, I don't see that. I've not come across that before in any other sort of hobby or interest or anything like that, where you get that sort of um, camaraderie sort of thing, if you know what I mean. I mean, to be fair, let's just put it this way. I'd like to echo what you've said and add on top of, you know, saying uh, meeting friends and coming close and talking to people. This group has become very close. Now, with that being said, in person, I have met one of our group, which is mental because we've all become, you know, unbelievably <clears throat> close. It's mental. Like we support each other we um even not even just um aviation or photography related just in general we've become a really really close group and i've met one of you in person you know um if it wasn't a 30 people wedding i'd sooner invite some of you than some of my own family <laughs> members you know what i mean you know but it's your fault it's your fault for living in Devon, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, there's people I've known for years that I don't know this much about them than I do, you know, and that wouldn't help me as much as some of you, as you lot would. Um, so that's a testament, like you say, to the hobby. And, you know, because I'm not sure off the top of my head how many there are in us of the core group. But it's just like... a big group of brothers chatting and you know sharing shots and aiding people and and to add on top of what martin said about inspiring people i genuinely think even though it's early doors we have done already um obviously i'm not going to sit here and say we've had a global impact but we've done enough where people have messaged us and and sent dms and asked you know how did you do that or can you help me with this and can i get a feature even you know, we, we've got people wanting to be part of this. And to be honest with you, considering, as you say, that, that Coningsby trip was about a year ago now, the fact that we've got this far in that amount of time is unbelievable. Mm. Oh, yeah, definitely. Totally yeah. agree. Um, totally agree. And obviously, uh, I think I think one of the things that we, that we wanted to talk about was obviously where we're going to go with the podcast and, and sort of, I think that's probably what you're bringing up next. So we might as well segue into it nicely. But... I think personally, we want to focus on on sort of UK av geeks and sort of uh, UK aviation photographers, UK aviation events, and things like that. Uh, and I think, um, obviously, I don't think there's anything out there at the minute in in the in the podcast world that sort of um, caters to that sort of specific. Yeah. Uh, I, I listen to a lot of aviation podcasts myself, and. There's not a lot that um, caters to just UK audience sort of thing. So I think that's one of the things we want to try and celebrate. And, and also, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I could be wrong, but also to aviation photography. Because you've got your aviation podcasts, but how many talk about the photography side of things? Well, yeah, and, and that's it, isn't it? And and, and that's, the, I think, there's, it, there's, it's a two-pronged thing that's brought us all together, isn't it? It's the photography yeah. and it's the aviation. And I think I think having that shared interest and that shared passion is the thing that will drive us forward and hopefully we can we can we can get some nice what sort of interesting guests on here that can sort of share tips tricks what things that they've learned through their career if, if they're professional at what they're doing or, or or even just through sort of their like selling their own prints or or, or or doing their own thing on social media sort of thing so yeah i think that would be uh, as far as i'm aware i'm pretty sure we do have some uh 
we have some guests lined up, which obviously could be quite interesting. We look, we obviously won't sit here and say too much just yet. Um, but look, we've got people working with us that aren't obviously in this chat now. Otherwise, it would be a bit hectic that, you know, for instance, Alex, who's, you know, mainly behind the, he's, the amount of work that guy's put into this, you know, our, our main Instagram and all of that is, it's unparalleled. I've never seen anything like it, personally. Yeah, he's, 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 uh, he, he's, he's done a lot of work and he's, uh, he's absolutely fantastic. And uh, he's, he has got a nice list of guests lined up for us over the yeah. next few episodes. So um, the old adage, watch this space sort of thing, that'll be, uh, it's going to be good. Yeah. Um, Martin, um, obviously, we're <laughs> expanding on from all of that, this, this podcast has been, obviously, the three of you, the reason why the three of you are the first ones to be, I guess, interviewed in a way is because you were the original one. So what is your opinion on where you want this podcast to be, let's say this time next year? Hopefully expanding the knowledge of other people that are listening. Hopefully we're reaching reaching a wider audience. And like I said, inspiring people, engaging people, getting people on board, getting people talking about what we're talking about. And yeah, listening to us in their free time. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. No, I agree. Um, ben, what have, you know, obviously in podcast wise, have you got anything in mind? Have you got ideas or dreams of where this could take us? <laughs> oh, we all we all have dreams. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I really echo like what Martin and and Ant said. Um, <clears throat> you know, for for the the people out there that listen to us, you know, whether it be ten people or ten million people. Um, if we can, as this podcast goes, just reach out to one person and, and improve that one person's skills or, you know, inspire them to go, you know, do you know what? I, I really want to go to Collingsby and go get a typhoon shot like that. I want to go to, you know, Waddington and get that shot. I will be, I'd be happy. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I think if, you know, if we, you know, 10 episodes down the line, and you know, we're getting you know some some young some young person in I don't know India or Australia or something like that. Go, do you know what? I I listened to your podcast the other day. I picked up my camera. It doesn't even have to be a DSLR camera that's cost you you know two thousand pounds. It could just be your iPhone, or it could just be your you know your your Coolpix camera that you got for your birthday. But if you go out there and get that shot, then you'll you're happy with it then we've done our job i think that's where we all start as well you know i I for one know for a fact that i didn't start with a dslr you know i started on my two megapixel camera phone um (laughs) one day my dad gave me his bridge camera that he was using and i started messing around with that which he preferred because he enjoyed it but he'd rather stand there and watch old school style um, from and that's, there you move on, you do your research, who's picking up what, you know, eventually you get your first camera, you start looking into lenses and then you see how expensive the hobby is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and, it, it, I'll tell you what, if you teach your kids about aviation photography and equipment, they'll never have money for drugs. So it's just going out. <laughs> yeah. You know, worst thing you're spending your money on. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's a good point there. It's not, just about going hang and shop it's about making that memory yeah and if it is a young girl or a young boy going out of their mum or dad or their granddad or their uncle and just spending quality time getting them shots and just experiencing uk aviation whether it be military or civilian yeah you know, we, you know we've all dabbed our feet in both um areas um but yeah making that experience and and having that time together is what makes us you know we've done trips before whether it just be two of us or whether it be eight of us we've had that time we've enjoyed it we've made memories and we can look back on it and like especially in these dark times that we're in at the minute with the whole global pandemic you can sit back and go do you know what back in july when we went to such and such and we did this it was fantastic and we made so many memories and we made more friends yeah, that's 
that's what it feels like for me, to be honest. I have a, um, obviously this isn't <laughs> on the schedule, but I do have a question for the three of you. Like I say, because there's only three of you, it's, it's quite a good, um, it's a good way of getting into your heads and seeing what you're about. It's not going to put you on the spot, but you might need to do some thinking. I've heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> So as we say, obviously, with memories and pictures and things like that, if I was to say to you, what is that one shot of yours that you've got? Or do you have one in particular that comes to your mind? So, Martin, when I've just said that one shot of yours, have you got any that come to mind that you go, this one because of such and such? Oh, I probably have to say the, the red arrow shot with a reflection in the puddle. Yeah. Like, I, I, so I visited RAF scamps in January at the start of the year, pre-COVID. COVID <laughs> wasn't even a thing. <laughs> no, in brighter days, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so Reds, Reds are in full swing with their January training. Um, There's a photo shoot with timeline events. And it was right, right, right at the end. People would start going home. And there's just one puddle and they had one red out for us and static. And it, it just about fit in the puddle, and that shot, it just, it just, it just worked perfect. And that, to be honest with you, mate, is one of my favourite ever shots of yours. Thank um, you very much. Because obviously, as you're aware, I'm a big fan of selective colour edits. And <laughs> it, then, was, it was you who inspired me for that selective colour. And then that's what I mean. You put it in the group, and I went, "He's beat me at my own game here." <laughs> but no, honestly, it is one of like my. In actual fact, I'm pretty sure that is my favourite shot of yours, without a doubt. Um, yeah. So, yeah, good shout. Um, and what about you? Oh, <laughs> can't you get to them? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh, I've just got so many. I, my, my problem, I get asked this question. I must get asked this question through Instagram on a weekly basis. Yeah. And every time I give a different answer. <laughs> to all the people who have ever asked me this question before what I'm about to say is probably not what I've told you <laughs> so um, for me I, I mean obviously I've done a lot of looking back over the last 12 months and I've been extremely lucky I mean m my work allows me to have days off in the week uh, and I can get to bases when they're active I can get to places like the Mac Loop when they're active so I'm, I, I know how lucky I am to be able to go out and catch these things. I, I know I'm a lot luckier than others that have Monday to Friday, nine to five jobs. So <laughs> it, um, I have got a lot of shots to choose from, but um, I had a, a rather productive day in the Mac Loop um, in, on the 15th of October last year, uh, which has been sort of loosely termed Super Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> amongst, it was uh, the Avgeek community. Uh, we had uh, 27 passes through the day of uh, a mix of F-15s, Hawks, and a single Texan. And uh, one, one of the F-15 shots that I got, it was, I'd managed to get it. So it was full topside, uh, streamers off both wings, fluff on both wings, and it filled the frame without me having to crop it. And it's got this amazing autumn colour in the background. Uh, and it, when, when, I, when I processed that shot and I posted it, it was like, I looked at it and I thought, this is exactly the sort of shot that I was trying to get in the Mac loop all this time. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I felt like I'd finally achieved the shot that I was after. Completely. After all them Mac visits. Because <laughs> <laughs> obviously, I mean, you, like, there's plenty of people like, that are famous for, for shots in the Mac loop and videos online and stuff in the Mac yeah. loop. So, um, uh, and there's far too many to mention on here, but um, some of the shots that you see are just like jaw dropping. And for me to, finally get a shot that i think is almost to that level yeah i was well happy with it so yeah that's that's definitely my one yeah i remember that day clearly because uh, uh i was at work and jealous of every single <laughs> off of the back of the camera shot that was being sent into the group so yeah cheers for that again uh, <laughs> that's fine, mate. I, lo I love to share oh you love to share the love you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's gotta be done. that was fun no that's a good shout though again i know exactly which one you're talking about because it's it's just one of those that stands out you know, yeah. as you say, it, it can be put up there with the best. So, yeah, good shout. Um, ben, over to you. You've had a little bit more time to think about it, mate. <laughs> it's, not made it, it's not made it any easier. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, mate. What's that one shot? Do you know what? what can I have two? <laughs> no. Make <laughs> um, <I> him pick. <laughs> I think the, the one shot that stands out for me... Um, 
was me and me and Anne went for a day. Um, I can't remember the day precisely, but we went to um, the RF Lake and Heath, and we went to Milden Hall as well. I can't remember if we did. I think we just went to Lake and Heath. Um, and we had the um, Aviano F-16s over from Italy. <laughs> and at the same time, the US, uh, USMC were bringing over their F-35s into Marham, which oh, is, yeah, yeah. is it about a, about an hour's drive away, I think, Ant, or something, something like that? Yeah, it was, yeah, 40 minutes or so. Yeah, something yeah, around so. that. <laughs> With the way Ant drives, probably half an hour, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the um, burn we're on. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, so the, the day started out there, wet, miserable, pouring with rain at Lake and Heath. Um, hit hiding under, hiding, hide, yeah, typical English weather, hiding under some uh, some trees, and it's the first F8, F-15s came out. Um, then we got the F-16s, and then we went to Marham, and we stood at a spot, and the F-35s from the USMC came in, and... I got it on my wall in a frame, which was the first, the first um, F thirty five, and then the second, so his wingman, both in the same shot on the taxiway, as crisp as anything, yeah. as clear as anything. Um, even to the fact that I, when I post it on social media, um, the pilot of the second jet messaged me asking for a copy of it, cool. and. Um, and sent over some swag, um, and yeah, that that there, that one picture just blew me away. I, we all get it. We all take. We all look at the back of our our cameras and we go, oh, mm, mm, or not, not too sure. Then you yeah. then you process it, and then you get that final process. You look at it and you go, damn, that's that's the yeah. money maker there. And yeah, I mean, I, I guess and Martin and everyone else can sit there and go. Oh well, you know, I prefer this shot over this shot, and but that one shot just made made the day. Like Anne said, no cropping needed, hardly any editing needed. It was just almost raw, and yeah, yeah it was it was a brilliant day, absolutely fantastic day. And yeah, yeah that that one shot. Um, you know, well, there aren't there's, many more out there. <laughs> there's not many, there's not many days where you get F-15s, F-16s, and F-35s. Is there? So no, no, that's it. No, absolutely not. You can go to air shows and not get that. Yeah, true. No, no especially that is, that is Marines it. as much as it does sometimes over here. I tell you what. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, get you, I know. I know the exact shot you're on about, mate, and it's a great choice. Like it is. I know what you mean. Um, crisp, clear. It's it's basically the shot you want. Mm. You know, like, but what uh, what has come to my mind in all of this is that you've all described that shot and the difference between every shot. It just goes to show how broad a spectrum it is in aviation photography. One of you's got, you know, an open day looking at the red. Another one is up in the Welsh mountains and another is, you know, hunting the USMC, you know, up in East Anglia or wherever it is. So it's that broad. And I think that's one of the things we're trying to get across to people that you don't have to go to just an air show. You don't have to go to red flag. You can spot from your garden sometimes. I can't because the most <laughs> I, I get fly, flying over my house is seagulls. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the odd easy jet at 30,000 feet. But the point remains, I recently, well, obviously between lockdowns, I drove down to Cornwall um, to get some static shots at the Aviation Heritage Centre. Okay, there's no flying, there's no burners, but it gave me that fix, which is sometimes all you need. And it gave me that inspiration to, you know, for instance, to say like, um, I saw some of Martin's shots with the long exposures. How did you get that? What's the best way of doing it? I spoke to Ant about it. I spoke to Ben. I spoke to, you know, and you put these things into practice. I was lucky because there's about three people in Cornwall. <laughs> so I, I pretty much had the place to myself. I could do 30 second long exposures with no one walking in the way and things like that. And you come away from it feeling good. Definitely. Yeah. To totally agree, mate. Like that, that's what it is, isn't it? You get that, you get that, uh, that, that fix, that adrenaline rush, that sort of, especially, especially in the Mac loop, like it's that anticipation all day. It's like fishing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you sit there for like, you could sit there for 10 hours and get nothing. And then all of a sudden 
bang, 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 you've got three jets through in the space of 20 seconds. Yeah. Uh, and you get yeah. that adrenaline rush from it. And I know, I know it's for the other chaps as well. It's equally as uh, exciting when you go on like organized shoots or just even to base trips. I mean, yeah. The excitement that, that me and Ben shared, like with the with the F thirty fives arriving that same evening that we happened to be in Lake and if it was like a no brainer to travel the forty minutes up the road. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely. got to be done. So I'm sure because obviously I'm sure it will be topic in another podcast down the line, or we'll be here for hours. But we've all had our unsuccessful ones as well. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's 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 a whole podcast on itself. That is a whole podcast <laughs> in itself, without a doubt. Uh, it might know. not be the most interesting one, but it'd be fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, let's, let's, let's leave it on a cliffhanger for that one. Let me put it this way. My first and only ever night shoot, I didn't manage to see any engines running because my camera stopped working. No. So that was good. That no, was good. I remember, I remember that one. <laughs> it happened. I was fuming, but again, that's for another Oh, time. no, not that one. <laughs> ben, you'd know because you were with me. Oh, yeah. Just the uh, hatred in my voice. <laughs> um, right, well... To be honest with you, chaps, um, have you got anything to add before we start closing off? No, I think I think that's been a good introduction to us, hasn't it? And a good sort of uh, intro to what we want to achieve here with the podcast. So uh, we just hope that people enjoy listening and enjoy uh, following us on on uh, Instagram and on Facebook. And well, also, speaking of, what are your... Because obviously we've, we've got you three on, all right, we're all part of the same group, but you've each got your private handles as well your own pages so um ben what have you got facebook and instagram and what are your tags uh so yeah i've got facebook instagram and a very small youtube which i've not uploaded anything for a while so yeah um my facebook and instagram both both pages exact same so it's uh ben's underscore aviation underscore photography and that's on uh, instagram and facebook yeah Nice one. Okay, ideal. Um, and same again. What what um, social medias have you got, and what's your tags? Yeah, yeah. I'm on Instagram, uh, Anthony underscore Fogarty underscore Aviation. Uh, that's where I'm most active. I do have a Facebook as well. You just just Anthony Fogarty. You can find me under there. The one with pictures of planes. Uh, <laughs> and then yeah, I've I have started a YouTube channel. I've actually that day I described in the Mac Loop. I've actually done a video of that in the style of uh, some rather more famous uh, Mac Loop uh, videographers, uh, which is on my uh, YouTube channel, which again is just under Anthony Fogarty. So if people want to have a look at that, that's great. Or you can find the link on my Instagram. Yeah, nice one. Um, Martin, same again, mate. Obviously, uh, which social medias and what are your uh, tags on them, mate? So it's just Facebook and Instagram for me. My tag is Delta underscore wing underscore images. Nice. Um, obviously, funny one behind that is you recently had someone message you saying, what was it? Um, you're called Delta Wing Images and you don't have many pictures of Delta Wings. <laughs> that, that was basically it, yeah. yeah. False, false advertisement. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, I, you, I don't you, know. You can put that right this year, mate, can't you? 2021. You I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously, as we're aware, there was another Coningsby trip planned. Again, um, lockdown has happened. We won't sit here and get into that. It's a shame. Needs must. Countries, you know, um, going through it, we're all missing out on stuff. Um, but yeah, look, we'll get there. This isn't going to be forever. We'll get our shots again. Fingers are tightly crossed for Riyadh hopefully Yeovilton and every other air show we've got this year um, yeah, I just really hope I tell you what um, I've upset the missus a few times by saying as long as they're not cancelled and then she gets upset considering my wedding is this year as well <laughs> <laughs> just before we go Andrew um, do you want to drop your um, Instagram as well and your Facebook mate if you've got yes yeah actually good shout um, so uh, I am on uh, Facebook and Instagram um, and it's just at Afterburner aviation um to be fair i'm surprised i've not got the same as martin anyone saying but not all of your shots have got afterburners in there <laughs> <laughs> false advertising again so yes yeah, um afterburner aviation um but yeah look it, it, i'm pretty sure this has gone quite well um it's brand new for all of us um Let's see how it goes, you know. Um, so just to sign off, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us for this pilot episode. Uh, 
obviously no pun intended um we hope you enjoyed it as much as we did please drop us a dm on instagram or join the facebook group if you want to give us any feedback it can be productive criticism it can be anything because it's engagement at the end of the day no try and keep it clean at least um <laughs> If there are any topics you want us to cover in the future, again, let us know, you know, whether it's our main page, whether it's any of us, get in touch. Everyone's friendly enough. We, we you know, we're not going to turn you away and, you know, we will give you the time of day. Um, so please get in touch. Any feedback, any topics, anything like that. Um, but yeah, uh, that aside, chaps, if you've got anything to add, I'm um, pretty happy to call it there. Uh, yeah thanks very much Andrew yeah yeah, yeah thank you um, just everyone just obviously get out there keep snapping we'll see all your work no matter yes. you know. uh, if you join if you join our groups then just to post some of your shots so we can see what see what what, 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 what you like to shoot and stuff like that definitely yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. Give, we'll we've back. got some tutorials as well I'm pretty sure on some of our th- um like there are some tutorials on there, you know, like panning and um, edits and things like that. Because obviously we're all learning on Photoshop, Lightroom, all of them. Um, again, you get the occasional one that says, "Oh, I'd rather just get the shot on the day." Okay. <laughs> the amount of times I don't know about you guys, but the amount of times I've heard, "I'd rather just get the yes, I get that." <laughs> But post processing isn't cheating; it's enhancing an already great image. Let's just put it that. And there, there's another pack podcast, isn't that? Like- Absolutely. <laughs> Honestly, we could have covered many topics in this one. It could have been a few hours long, but um, yeah. no. Um, um, what's that? Sorry, mate. Don't forget, we've got our challenge on Facebook. We've got our ten challenges over the year. Yes. Yeah. Ten yeah, assignments. Yeah. Yeah, ten assignments, and that obviously will. Um, yeah, have, have we started that yet, or is that? Have we, is it- no, that, that, well, that's supposed to start in March, so right. it might be changed and dropped down an assignment. But the best photo, whoever gets the most likes, gets a print, free print, all paid for. I haven't got to worry about it. Something right. nice for people to get involved in. That's yeah. Good to yeah, no, that's um, no, that that will be cool as well. And like I say, all the details will be on Facebook and everything. Um, yeah, Anything think, else, chaps, or are we calling that? Yeah, I think anyone that's um, going to share your, your images, remember the hashtag AvGeeksAssemble. We'll, we'll see it because it's linked with our with our main page. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll try and share as much of your work as we can and get, your, you, know, get you out there and you know, get everyone seeing your amazing work. That's it. There are no stupid questions and you've got to start somewhere. So never be embarrassed to ask for help, ask for advice. Um, just get involved in the community because at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do. Um, it's, it's for everyone. Aviation photography isn't for the rich. It's not for um, those that live on base. It's for everyone. So just remember that. Um, yeah, totally agree yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, But yeah, that's that. All right then, chaps. Thank you very much. I look forward to the next episode. Um, Yeah. Take care of yourselves. See you later. See you later.